Welcome to the first ever video episode of the podcast. With me today is Kelly Oliver, a folk singer from Hertfordshire. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you very much. Now, we've just recorded some songs, so would you like to introduce the first one for us? So the first one is called Lay Our Heavy Heads, and it's off of my second album, Bedlam. Perfect. And what's the song about? Um, it was inspired by um, my uncle, actually, and his, um, his wife, who sadly passed away last summer. Um, but I was really moved by the idea that when you get married to somebody, you promise to look after them in sickness and in health. And um, unfortunately, like, she was ill and she was... Yeah, so he became her carer, basically. Um, and I was just really moved by the, by the idea. So that's what the song is based on. Okay, this is Lay Our Heavy Heads. So Kelly, what inspired you to take up music? Um, my inspiration to start playing music was since I was little. Really, I've always um, I've always been a singer. I've always sung. Just when I was little, I used to sing. Um, I used to be in choirs at school, and I did a lot of musical theatre as well. Um, but it wasn't actually until I um, left uni actually that I started singing um, just with me and my guitar. Um, and I think that was really based on 
um, visiting Ireland for the first time when I was at uni um, and I was really immersed in like the live music scene and out in Ireland like the amateurs there are like professional level um, and it's just incredible so I guess I just thought oh that's really nice that's really nice atmosphere and it made me think oh, I'd like I'd like to do that as well and that's partly where I got into singing folk as well. Was that kind of inspired by your grandmother? Yeah, um, well, I think so. My grandmother, um, she was from Tralee in Ireland, but she um, died when I was young and, and she um, she had Alzheimer's, so uh, I didn't know her all that well. But I do feel like she's passed on some kind of love for traditional music, maybe, or Irish music. So, yeah, I feel like it's inherent in, in me. So what are your fondest musical memories? I think... Um, it was definitely definitely some were doing musical theatre at school um, because that was the first time where I actually sung solos. You know, even if it's just a line, it was like in a group of people singing a solo. Um, really gives you a love for performing, um, and we just had some great great fun. Like, um, and I think that gave me a love of actually, or, or maybe the confidence to actually stand up and sing. Um, but yeah, musical memories are, oh, I don't know, I, I didn't even really go to that many live music gigs. Um, that was only recently as well, since I've started working on the scene. That's really when I started actually going regularly to concerts. I never really used to do that, I don't know why. But I'm sure that would have, I'm sure like that has definitely like helped and, um, you know, made, made it more exciting, I suppose. Awesome. So, let's have another song. Uh, what should we have this time? Um, so this is a song called Miles to Tralee. Um, this was um, in, inspired by my grandmother who was from Tralee in Ireland and she moved over to England and um, she was ill. She had um, Alzheimer's so I didn't know her very well. It was when I was very little um, but I always sort of wondered, I wonder if she wanted to ever go home, um, you know, in her old age. Um, so that's what that song's inspired by. Lovely. This is Miles to Tralee.
So can you tell me a little bit about your local music scene in Hertfordshire? I mean, in terms of folk music, I gig quite a lot around the country. I, I play um, a lot of venues like this one, this Lister, um, and I do a lot of folk club gigs, um, which are based all over the UK. So I don't actually gig that much locally, but I know that there is a fantastic scene, um, really um, kind of a community feel. I suppose you get that in every city though, don't you? And, and you get to you know, know about the local acts at play. Um, and my local BBC Introducing is Beds, Hearts and Bucks and they're really supportive of local acts. Um, in fact, they put forward um, James Bay. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's just one of those scenes that tries to encourage local artists. Yeah, of course. Can you recommend any local bands that you've played with? Yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of, yeah, bands, there's quite a few. Um, so there's a band called CC Smugglers. Um, they're fantastic. They're like a Americana bluegrass band. Um, and they're doing really well at the moment. So definitely check them out if you haven't heard of them. Um, there's a lot of solo acts that are doing really well. Um, so there's, um, I, I'm, I'm on a fo- um, record label called Folks Up Records actually. And there's a lot of female soloists on that record label. Um, there's a singer called Minnie Birch, um, who's really fantastic. And Emma McGrath, she's also, um, a great one to check out um yeah loads I, th- I think um j- i find that the music scene kind of gets smaller as you get into it and you you actually start to hear people's names and that you've heard of before and you're like oh where did i hear that and actually it just seems to everybody just seems to know one another it's really nice right time for another song now what's this one called and what's it about this one is called the other woman um this is also on my album bedlam and this is kind of based on um basically i was i'm a big fan of the series peaky blinders do you watch it i think i've seen a couple of episodes it's amazing anyway i won't go into that but it's amazing (laughs) and basically um the lead character is like a gangster and he's he kills people and he he's you know he's a bad guy that you love him like he's the protagonist um and I became really interested in the idea that people that do I, I kind of wanted to write a song about um the other woman but from the mistress's point of view and then and kind of I thought I thought if I can try and make people feel sorry for the mistress that'll be a challenge because it's wrong <laughs> so um that's yeah, you know, it's wrong. so i wanted to but i thought well i guess there's two sides to every story so i wanted to tell the other side of the story
won't satisfy my hunger or my overwhelming thirst For his woman he will leave me alone She's the other woman on the throne, yeah She's the other woman on the throne Okay, so if you could play a show anywhere in the world where would you play? It doesn't have to be a music venue, it could be anywhere. Well, the thing is, it would be a music venue because that's all I think about is just music. So um, I guess it would be somewhere like maybe Coachella, <laughs> America, or the Super Bowl. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> It'd be pretty impressive being able to play the Super Bowl. I'm Not many people can on the say Super Bowl. that. I know. Didn't Beyonce do it recently? And uh, who else? Coldplay. She was, she was in it. Or Chris Martin. She was in it this year with yeah. Coldplay. And who was the other and one? And Bruno, Bruno Mars. Mars as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's say the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. If you had a time machine and you could go back in time to see any gig, anyone playing anywhere, who would you go and see? Wow, that's a good question. I don't know because I, I wasn't really, I didn't really follow music like that much while I was growing up like I obviously I listened to it but I didn't really follow bands or like you know so I don't know who I don't know who I missed that was playing around but um I guess if I could go back in time when I you know wasn't alive um maybe like one of Bob Dylan's early gigs um or or Michael Jackson actually I think my dad saw Michael Jackson um when he was in the height of his fame and I would have loved to have been there so I'll say Michael Jackson if you could choose three musicians that could be alive or dead to have a dinner party with, like even in a conversation and maybe playing some music, who would you have? Dolly Parton. She's really fun. She was playing at Glastonbury and her set was just hilarious. So Dolly Parton. Mm. Alanis Morissette. Because I just love her and I'd like to ask her about Jagged Little Pill <laughs> what she was thinking when she wrote it. Um, last musician me Dolly Parton and Alanis Morissette um maybe like Laura Marling because she's really seems really quiet and reserved but I bet she's actually really like upbeat and has a lot of stories to tell so probably Laura Marling big into the female singer songwriters yeah, of then. course definitely yeah <laughs> is, is that where your sort of musical tastes lie outside of um, your own stuff not especially like I do like um obviously singer songwriters and um I like female singer songwriters because of a lot of the subjects that they sing about is I guess you can relate to being a female um but I like all sorts I like bands um a lot I like male singers um I, I I'm quite open-minded when it comes to music because I think you can learn as a musician you can learn from you you don't know where your um inspiration is going to come from and it could come from anywhere that you're not expecting so I try and listen to as much music as possible that's great so let's have our final song now what's this one so this one is called Jericho and this is based on the biblical story of uh, the walls of Jericho mm -hmm. um, and I co-wrote it with the producer Nigel Stonia who produced it on my album and it's just a bit of a contemporary twist so that's what this one is called perfect this one's called Jericho <laughs> Oh 
That was the excellent Jericho by my guest Kelly Oliver. Uh, thanks for coming in, Kelly. Thanks um, for having me. If people want to check out your music, find out more about you, where can they go online? Um, well, you can check my website, which is kellyoliver.co.uk. Um, there's information about gigs I'm doing, festivals I'm playing at, and everything like that. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook, um, facebook.com forward slash kellyolivermusic. Um, I'm on Twitter, at Kelly Oliver UK, so please tweet me. Um, Instagram, SoundCloud, you can have a listen to my stuff, and my albums are available on iTunes as well as Bandcamp. Perfect. Thank you for <laughs> Thank coming you. in. That was the fantastic Kelly Oliver. Thanks for watching the first ever video episode of the Procast. I'm Andy Proctor. Thank you.